Five seconds remaining. OG's turn to ban. Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. <laughs> Radiant <laughs> Team Ban. Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. OG's turn to ban. Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. Radiant Team Ban. OG's turn to ban. Ten seconds remaining. OG's turn to pick. Ten seconds remaining. Radiant Team Pick. Drow Ranger. Radiant Team Pick. OG. I speak for the trees. Send. Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. OG's oh, turn to back. <laughs> Absolutely. And uh, for Ninjas, they need to uh, win this game just to keep themselves in the running for the playoffs, honestly, because they've got some tough games coming up today. You know, they're playing Liquid, which turn out to be the biggest game of the day, the way that things are going on at the moment. Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. Radiant Team Ban. Okay, so we have some picks so far. Ten seconds remaining. 
OGs turn to ban. It amazes me that there's two ways I see OG winning a lot of games, and one of them is a Drow Ranger, the other one's Mag. I'm amazed they ever get either of those heroes. Like, they're, they're amazing with both of them. Obviously, they've been playing a lot of... Yeah? Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. And IOTW was playing it before when he was in the squad as well, so that's how long ago they were playing it. Um, I'm interested to see how they build around this Drow, though. Obviously, Noto's going to be playing the Abaddon. We've been seeing him on that hero, just purging off, just being annoying in the landing stage. He doesn't need any net worth, which uh, is what Noto's best at. He doesn't really farm on this position 5 at all. Um, the Nature's Prophet opener from Ninjas, though. Obviously, PPD can play this as a 5. But they could also play as a 3 as well on 3-3. Three, three. Sankin can play the 3 or the 4 as well. So really nice flex opening from Ninjas. As with OG, you kind of know where these two heroes are going already. It might be a little bit easy, easier for Ninjas to play into. Remaining. And like draft into at least. 5 seconds remaining. It's really difficult, because when there's 3-3 three, three on Ninjas, you know, like, anything could happen. It's really difficult to ever call one of his picks, because he has such a, like, such a versatile hero pool. He plays so many different things, but... I'm looking towards, for OG, a lot of different heroes you could play with this Jar Ranger, so things like the Storm might possibly come up. Um, things like the OD as well. Sniper is something we've been seeing a lot more of recently, too. Radiant Team Pick. What are they going to go for here? I think you probably pick one of your causes to not show whether it's going to be the five or the three nature's profit. Uh, we've been playing some lone druid recently. Uh, Ace and three three both play that hero, so they could go for it here. It's a really Ten nice flex pick again that can play either the safe lane or the mid lane. Can even play off lane as well, obviously. But Five seconds remaining. Oh, depends how they want to approach this game. Okay, I, I was gonna say I really like the Wyvern pick up against the Jar Ranger. It's one of my favourites. Um, obviously you have the curse. You know there's a lot of physical damage coming through, and having the heal available against the Jar Ranger is always massive. Just keeping people alive as long as possible. Ten seconds remaining. So what do they want to build up on OG here? They need a little bit of catch, you would assume. And they need a little bit of wave clear as well. So you pulse fours with both. Maybe like a shadow shaman for them might be okay. Works decently with the draw or two. Obviously giving you a nice little bit of attack speed. They just need some kind of catch against this nature's prophet. Otherwise it's so difficult when the nature's prophet just starts taking over the game. Like it's just constantly split pushing you. It's really difficult to deal with if you don't have the right kind of heroes. What are they going to go for? What else does Jerax Radiant play? Like a tiny maybe as well might be okay. Ooh. Okay. There's your wave clear. Grim Mm. They don't really have like a, a Grimstroke partner at the moment, Ten but I've seen Jerax play this quite a lot recently and he doesn't Always necessarily need one. He's been playing this Grimstroke really well in its own right. So we'll see if they want to go for something that works with it. Obviously, Doom's banned, which is the one we usually see. Well, there's obviously still other, a few other possibilities. Maybe something like a Pug that might be okay here as well. Hopson and uh, Seb both play that hero very well. Something like a Monkey King might be okay here for ninjas. I feel like they still need a little bit more gap close to get on top of this drow. Don't want to give her a free game. OG's oh, turn to pick. Arc Warden. Okay. Oh. Interesting. I've seen this hero pop up a little bit more recently. It kind of died off for a long time. Uh, it, it's making its way back. Obviously, Art Warden very good at keeping your structures alive up against the Drow Ranger. 
Um, Jarl doesn't ever really want to be in the bubble Ten to hit the Art Warden me. either, which, which makes it very difficult for her. Kind of opens up the map a little bit more, gives you more split push. You've now got the Nature's Prophet and the Arc Warden. Opens the map up completely. At the moment, you know, this Arc Warden is going to be the absolute late game monster. See whether OG want to kind of match that late game tempo or whether they want to try and force something early. But it sounds really difficult against like the Arc Warden bubble, the Wive and Wave Clear, the Sanking high ground initiation potential. It's not an easy one. Do they go for PA? Some kind of gap close, but like they play PA really well. But then, like you say, it's like Drow Spectre, PA Spectre. Like it doesn't doesn't really seem to work. They could go for like Ember TA or something. Spirit. Okay, Ember. See, very comfortable hero for Topson. Been playing this a lot recently, and it's a hero that can just get on top of the Arc Warden. They have decent catch for the Ember though. They've got the Curse. They've got the Burst Strike. I don't have a huge amount of burst damage to bring the Ember down quickly, remaining. though. Which I think is a little bit of a worry for Ninja. Like, when you're playing against this Ember, he's just dancing Five around the fights all remaining. the time with Slight of Fists, Remnants as well. You really want to just try and lock him down and burst him down quickly, so... You know, possibly look at something like a Sven? Or... Any kind of, like, hard burst damage carry. And then if you're like, playing Sven Arc Warden, it sounds a little bit greedy. OG's turn to ban. How has Enigma been completely ignored this draft as well? It's like that's one of the you know the stronger heroes in the game at the moment, but both teams just going for something. Ten seconds remaining. Yeah, Ninja's open with their three and their four, and you know the other team has, and they have a Wyvern as well. So OG probably don't want to pick it into the Wyvern either. But it feels like OG are lacking this big team fight hero that they can play around. Like it gets this ten minute mark, the Jar and the Ember aren't going to really want to be fighting around the map. Maybe Topson can if he has a good start. Obviously with the sleight of fist maxed out early on, he can do a lot of damage. But they miss like this big ultimate, this big tanky hero. You know something like a Tide Hunter might be okay. I don't think that's the greatest um, example, but. That's the kind of hero they need. That's why you see uh, ninjas banning out the bro the uh, brewmaster. It's been really nice. It's banned out as well. Darkshire as well would have been another one. Ten seconds remaining. What else is there? Like a tree in the past, but I think you need Five something more. Remaining. But something more active than that, that can play the map quickly. They don't have a huge amount of reserve time left. Radiant team pick. Tide okay. I'm surprised they went for the Tide, honestly. I, Tide was just an example of what kind of hero they needed. But What do they want on ninjas now? Actually, it's probably going to be... So Ace is going to be playing the Arc Warden. Probably going to be a far to hero, right? Ten seconds remaining. Goody's... Five seconds remaining. Like, I don't see a 3-3, like, 10th pick auto win hero that sometimes there is, like, a brood or a, a lone druid sometimes or anything like that. Just need something nice and stable to carry you through the mid-game here. Just let the art warden farm up. And a lot of his heroes have been banned out already, like the ODs, the razors. He's played troll in the past as well. Monkey kid. Choose your hero. Okay. Obviously, the Monkey King's pretty good against the Ember Spirit in lane. I think Topson would have played this matchup a lot, so he kind of knows how to play around it. But, you know, Fata should be okay in that kind of 1v1 scenario. Yeah, maybe. Could do. 
There isn't a huge amount of roaming potential from OG either, so they might just shove the Art of Water mid because they know that the Grimshook and the Abaddon don't really want to roam in to help. What? I was going to say, yeah. The way that they OG play the Drow, though, is they don't really play around the aura attack speed to his team. They kind of just use it in its own right. Uh, you don't want to... You don't want to have to force yourself to pick range heroes just because there's a drow. You want to pick the right hero for the game. And they need a gap close for this Arc Warden, so they pick the Ember. And then they need big team fight. They pick the Tide. I like the Monkey King pick for ninjas, though, as well, because it gives them this gap close on top of the drow. Like, if he gets a BKB at a decent time this game on Farta, he can just run away with these team fights by himself because there's not a huge amount of, like, control on OG. Jax will be forced to use the uh, Soulbind onto Monkey King when he gets that BKB, especially. I am um, a little bit worried though that Zart Warden and the Monkey King between them could just run away with the game. And the way that 3 3 plays is Nature's Prophet, you know, he's going to go for this utility tanky build, I imagine. Team fight looks really strong. The supporting cast. It's close. I mean, I, for, by the drafts, I would go with Ninjas, but I mean, M Thompson is one of those players that. You never know what's going to happen with him. Like, he could go absolutely crazy. He could just go naught and 10. Like, we have no idea. Normally, normally. <laughs> Prepare for battle. Courier is that? Is it one of the old compendium ones? I don't think it's the new one. We'll turn this we'll time, turn to, this our time to our Oh, it's my first. It's my. Uh, it's my first time casting OG since they added all the the Seb voice lines into the game. So I'm looking forward to seeing. I'm looking forward to seeing how they utilise those. That's the most important thing this game. Well, they're actually going to put Seb. Oh, he missed. The battle begins. I'll trust to be in. It felt like he. It looked like he felt forced to get the four like hits off just to get the jingu going, and then he got it, and he was like, "Oh yeah, this is this is really silly. Like, I'm not gonna live here." Yeah, unfortunately for Seb, he had to level up the gush before to secure the double kill. So in this lane. You really want the anchor smash early on to reduce the damage of the trees you know, ripping through you. Topson as well in bot lane. No, he was fine. He was just about to run through the trees. I thought he might take a lot of damage there. But he's fine. I love some good Abaddon gaming. I don't know who doesn't? You know, like shit in a lane, constantly. No, no. 
Brits don't do sarcasm, I'm sure. <laughs> oh, mid lane. Dyer's middle tower is under attack. Shots, Traxix. That's three three just TPing in behind the tower, then just running at the Drow Ranger. Even take a point in the the tree dance on Monkey King. I'm surprised they managed to just chase Anna down like that. <laughs> I just wasn't expecting that mid lane. Yeah, now that, the, now that the Sand King's level 3 as well, the, the damage from Sandstorm, you know, more than doubles from the level 1 to level 2, 20 to 45. I love what ninjas have done here, by the way, as well. They move they, when the nature's prophet TP to mid to get the kill. He's taken over the lane, but then, like you say, they got the matchup they wanted up in the top lane, where Seb is. Uh <laughs> Just not expecting these kills to happen at all. <laughs> Lane as well, top turn. Oh, they got him! To be fair, trying to do, be a cameraman against Topson must be the worst thing ever because he's constantly on about 20% HP. So you have no idea whether he's actually ever going to die. So far, the laning stage though for ninjas is going really well. Yeah. But this pause, this pause is so nice, by the way, because look top lane. You're not even going to miss it this time. Yeah, let's do, let's do some chat interaction. So press one if you think Seb's gonna live. And press two if you think he's gonna die. But he, if he lives, I'll give you all a BZZ Golden Pugna set. It's, uh, that's how confident I am. He's going to have it off cooldown soon, though, but they don't know Jarex is here at all, so I, th I think they should be able to finish off Ace. Topson will die of that tower if he has to. Anybody that's watched him play before, we all know what's going to happen. <laughs> He's going to end up in those trees behind the tower in a second. Oh, no. It's 
Seb's having a really rough game though. It's five minutes in, he's not even level four yet in a lane that he's been now alone in most of the time. Walking back mid to lane up against this Nature's Prophet now, but Ace takes over the lane. So he's like, oh, I don't really want to be here either. <laughs> I really want to be against this Nature's Prophet, but it's not going to happen, unfortunately. There's so many just empty lanes for both teams this game. Yeah, they can, but at the same time, I feel like OG have decent defense, especially when the target's level 6. Like, they're really not going to be wanting to give their towers away for free with this kind of lineup. And you have the constant poke from the Ember with the slights. Snowtail can just constantly heal people up as well, so it's not easy to take engagements into them. Dyer's top tower is under attack. Bot lane though. Oh. Dyer's top tower is under attack. Dyer's top tower has fallen. <laughs> Dyer's middle tower is under attack. Dyer's structure. Yeah, you've uh, you made the point that No Tail felt like he was they were getting a lot of value out of him. I would argue that this Sand King feels like he's been everywhere this game. He's 3-0-3 at seven minutes in. Like he's look at this again. Dyer's middle tower is under attack. Dyer's middle tower has fallen. Bot lane. Dyer's structures are fortified. Radiant's bottom tower is under attack. Trust my end comes at a price. Nipper playing this game so fast and so aggressive. I mean, OG, the lineup they have between the Jar and the Ember, they need a little bit of time to come online, and Ninjas are just not giving it to them. Jar's not even level 6 yet, and, you know, they've lost so many towers. A tree. Dyer's middle tower is under attack. I mean, OG are a really good time at playing around their timings, but unfortunately, you get to a point in the game where you don't have any timings to play around. It's very difficult. You need this tide level 6, you really need the drow 6 so she can just carry on farming, which she just hits now. Is it a little bit too late? Dyer's top tower has fallen. case they really need to try and get their way back into the game through net worth at the moment they are very far behind need to make some space for Anna and Thompson here hey I was gonna say yeah I just realized <laughs> the and when he gets that drums online as well with the face loops He's in a decent position to just constantly force engagements.
Right, so Seb has the Ravage now. He's just hit the level 6, but unfortunately he's very poor. He's, uh... Meantime, Thompson just to get a kill on Ace, which is Oh no tell. The Lavin's wisdom is not to be questioned. Will my labors live on? Dive are scanning. They scan. That was that was pretty sick, I'll be honest. And ninjas kind of baited themselves in there. They didn't respect the ravage turnaround from the top, especially with Anna connecting up and just coming in from the high ground. Uh, that that ravage turnaround was massive. You know, Barter puts down the Wukongs, but really have enough follow up uh, around him to be able to, you know, finish off those kills. Ooh. Nin. It's always a fun name to cast, isn't it? Seb. A nice little play there. I don't know if people noticed. Saxa waited for the Kraken Shell to proc before he went in with the stun. Just to have that extra bit of uh, lockdown available to him. He has a blink! Pigeon 2. I sleep with the fishes. Then he broke a sweat. Yeah, I was really surprised that OG tried to take a fight in the middle of that Wukong's command. Like they were just running in heroes one by one, and unfortunately for them, 3-3 had just picked up a mech before that fight as well, which I think took them by surprise a little bit. But uh, yeah, Topsa manages to clean up, which is nice for him. Yeah. 
That's big for Nip as well, because have they got a medallion on anyone? Oh, top lane Jerax as well, under Grimstroke. Might be in trouble still. Well, they know he didn't walk past the creep wave, so I'm surprised they didn't try and check the trees at least a little bit. He has a... He has a Quelling Blade, though, on Jurex, ready for the Nature's Prophet, so it allows him to cut away through the trees there as well. Would have been difficult for them to find him. Dyer's bottom tower is under attack. Illusion. <laughs> there is a 10k net worth advantage now. It's not like Nipper holding back. They're getting their advantage by the minute. <laughs> Dyer's top tower is under attack. As a math tutor, I feel personally offended. <laughs> and I don't. I talked. I talked about it before, by the way. Saxy got this blink so quickly on the sanking. It was uh, pretty impressive. Dyer's bottom tower is under attack. Dyer's structures are fortified. Dyer's bottom tower is under attack. Dyer are scanning. Dyer's bottom tower has been denied. Not the FP though. Dyer's middle tower is under attack. Curse. Bottom tower honest, has comparison to the Liquid Secret game earlier, this was like the complete opposite end of the spectrum. Like this is this is just bonkers crazy where everyone's just running at each other. Mm. Liquid Secret ve felt very a lot more methodical. Like, tower is under <laughs> uh, something I want to point out as well that's happening in these fights that I, I'm sure people know, but. There might be some people that aren't realizing. When the uh, Ember uses slight uh, Fire Remnant, sorry, it matches the movement speed you currently have. So when he's fluxed up, you really don't want to cast that Fire Remnant out because it moves so slow. But if you use Slight of Fist and cast the Remnant during the meantime, during the Slight of Fist, it, because you're not affected by the slow, the Remnant's going at full speed, which allows Topson to jump around these fights so much quicker. Bartus got this BKB queued up, which I'm really happy about, because he had Diffusal queued up before, but I think the BKB is going to make the world of difference in these fights. Dyer's bottom tower is under attack. Does killing you make me monkey? Ah. Uh. Sharks have my flesh, leaving 
so soon? The seeds of fortune. And Dyer's middle tower is under attack. Dyer's structures good. are fortified. Radiant and Nota has been doing so much work in these fights, and when he dies first, it, it makes the, so, the fight so much more difficult for OG. Like, he's constantly healing these cores up on the front line, you know, keeping them in fighting shape. Thompson. dies out. <laughs> this will come in handy. Uh -huh. I understand. I was going to say, I understand that you don't want to give the Roche away, but without the Ravage, it's really difficult to take this fight. Like, you have constant poke with the Grimstroke Stroke of Fate and the Slight of Fist, but you're putting yourself at massive risk there where you don't really have vision around the pit. Solar crest on 3 3. I feel like they need to hit a point in this game at some. It depends when they want to do it on ninjas, but if they can get like three BKBs up all at the, you know, roughly the same time. I know Farta has his already, which I think he has to in these engagements because he's the one jumping in all the time. If the Arc Warden and the Nature's Prophet can get BKBs at the same time at some point in this game, they could be like a, a real force at that, at that time. Oh no, Tear. And in the bot lane as well, they have to be careful now. It must be. They get the sprout. Radiant's middle tower is under attack. Radiant's middle tower is under attack. Dyer's bottom tower is under attack. So, one mechanic we haven't talked about this game is the Soulbind. Um, if you use the Soulbind onto the Sand King, it actually stops you from using Burrow Strike. So, that's one way to try and control Saxo in these fights at least, but... That's the power of the Nature's Prophet as well, right? Like the way it just opens up the map, allows you to constantly shove in waves. And it's not even just him. Like this Ace Art Warden has a Boots of Travel as well. So OG are really feeling the pressure because their waves are constantly being shoved in towards their face. And they can't push them out quickly enough to deal with them. That Wrath of Nature. We've got the BKB off. Going in here. Dyer's middle 
Ace still has the Aegis for another about 30 seconds here, 40 seconds, so he's absolutely fine to just sit here and hit the buildings. He didn't have Ravage either. It's a dieback. They're going to have Ravage available, so they might need to just let this Rax fall, try and take a fight around it. They can poke with Topson, but it's not easy here. Sprout? Oh, Topson's getting so low. I think you just play it safer. The seeds are full. Dyer's bottom shrine is under attack. It's not looking great, is it? Has to be said. But, uh... Maybe Drow can just proc every single hit in a fight and just wipe through them all. I caught Topson! Get the curse off. Dyer's bottom barracks are under attack. Radiant victory. Dyer's middle tower is under attack. Yeah, I mean, the way they set up their lanes on ninjas was really good. Like, this TPN that killed Anna at the start of the game just allowing... Them